Just wanted to welcome everybody and uh, just say thanks for taking the time out of your guys' day to come join us and have some fun here tonight. And um, this is our fifth annual seminar that we're going to be uh, that we're holding. So um, this is our corporate headquarters for uh, Maumee, Ohio. This is our corporate headquarters. It has all of our um, accounting, IT areas, and and you guys can probably uh, get a tour of the facility afterwards if you guys want to. Um, so we have something special for you guys tonight. We have two LiftMaster experts here today, and we're going to be discussing uh, residential radio controls, commercial operators, as well as the new UL325 regulations for commercial products and residential safety. So exciting stuff. And we are going to also be streaming today's presentation live online to people all over the world. For those of you watching the presentation online, please use the chat form below the video box to ask a question during the presentation. To use, simply fill out the name, comma, your company in the name field. Type your name in the message and then push the send button to go. Your questions will be answered throughout the presentation and if you're here in person, just wait until the end of the presentation and uh, we'll answer all of the questions that you guys have at that time. And to get things uh, started off, I would like to give you a quick background about the story of Sir Spring Corporation. My great-grandfather, Clarence Weigel, started it in 1962 with the mindset that the customer always comes first. We are still committed today to serving our customers first and foremost. Um, we, we work with uh, multiple other suppliers to give you guys kind of the best uh, for technical support and the best in customer service. And um, we are third generation with my father here, Mike McAleer, and he's going to give a quick introduction. So here's Mike McAleer, CEO of Service Spring. Thank you. I know. I like how he says. Oh, thank you. I like how he says quick. He gets up here and talks all he wants, and he tells me I have to be quick. I am, like Matt said, third generation. I'm the CEO. I've been the president, while well, president for the last 21 years. So I've seen even our business really develop and grow. But one of the things that I, I think has been constant since day one, since my grandfather taught me, and that's about customer service and putting the people here, you guys and the people online as number one focus, and that is providing unequaled service through innovation. That's what we call What does that mean? To me, it's about providing new opportunities or tools or services that you guys can use on your day-to-day -day basis. I'm proud of the fact that one of the things in our innovative toolbox that we provide you is some of the, the technology, and Matt heads up the technology side, and that's like our solutions education, or excuse me, well, solutions education is one thing. That's our educational piece. We have our solutions mobile. And we're going to, in that, we have, I think, over 5,000 applications being used right now uh, throughout both Android and iOS. We are going to, we're going to be talking, I think Matt's going to tell you a little bit, a little later today about Solutions Connect. And Solutions Connect is kind of bringing all those technologies together, plus some additional exciting things that we're going to bring that hopefully you can use as a tool in doing your day-to-day -day work. And with that, I guess I'm, I'm proud to be third generation. I'm proud to have the fourth generation involved, actively involved in the business, and wanting to participate. And my daughter's here somewhere. I, she, she's involved, and I have a couple other children that are, one's not involved right now, but has, and my wife's back here, which is nice. She gets zero, um, uh, she has to deal with me for uh, 30 years now, so it's, it's been a rough ride for her, but I, I'm really happy that she's, been, she's here. And I guess with that, I want to I wanna get on with the program. Matt, you have what's next? Yeah. Very good. So we're going to get started with our first presentation here. Thank you for that. And our first presenter is a familiar face. She's been here before uh, from previous seminars. Her name is Sherry Johnson. She's the radio control sales manager for LiftMaster. She began her career with LiftMaster 14 years ago in a marketing focusing on the radio control line. Sherry was a key marketing team member on many new product development teams that helped launch many LiftMaster products offered today. 
In 2012, Sherry was promoted to LiftMaster Sales as Radio Control Sales Manager and promoted the LiftMaster Radio Line with customers and consumers every day. We're glad to have Sherry back again this year to fill us in on the latest in LiftMaster's radio control accessories. Please give a warm welcome to Sherry Johnson. Okay, I'm terrible at this kind of stuff. Um, so like, I am Sherry Johnson. Nice to see everybody today, and I'm glad to be back here. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy being invited every year. Um, I'm just gonna go over some radio control updates. Uh, some, quite a few of you have already heard about our radio controls or are familiar with our radio controls. I'm just gonna go over some new stuff that we've got. Um, am I in control here? I don't know. All right, what do I point at? Oh, that might be. No, that's on. Oh, now it's on. Technology channel challenge with uh, remote control. Go figure. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is something that I've been trying to get out into the market for several years now, uh, and it's our new commercial wireless keypads. These were designed for our commercial door operator line and our gate operator line, so that's a brand new product. Um, we have two of them, and I've got samples up here. I will show them to you. So the first thing I wanna talk about is some of the key features of these new products. Um, there are two of them. One is a five code, a KPW5, and then a KPW250, a 250 code. If you're familiar with our products, we had um, a version of these in a, plas like a, a gray plastic. I think they were called the WKPs, now they're the KPWs. Um, the, the five code is polycarbonate, all black. Um, the keypads are metal keypads. The 250 is it got a die cast housing. This is my favorite. So this is my baby. So it's just launched uh, Monday, so you guys are getting a little sneak peek on it. it. The mailing went out last week on this product, and we are now selling it. Um, so this one's a die cast aluminum. The nice thing about these keypads is that they are NEMA 4X rated on the electronics package. So you can mount these outside and not worry about them getting the electronics damaged. So that's the one key thing that I want to talk about on this. Um, they, like I said, they have um, metal keys and they are keyed. So to get in and do anything, there's a key that you use to get into the, um, to, to uh, reset them or change the battery out. Uh, there is a five year lithium battery inside. We do recommend that if you replace the battery, you replace it with another lithium battery for uh, environmental. Okay. So this is just an overview of some of the features. Like I mentioned, the, the ratings for the uh, outdoor environment. So the housings are NEMA 3R rated but the electronics package inside is completely NEMA 4X. So that is a nice feature for us. Um, another nice feature is that these also can do uh, 10 temporary codes, regardless of which model. And the temporary codes can be set for one to nine uses. So if you have a service person that you need to be able to get into that gate operator or that commercial door operator, you can set them up to be used two times or one time or up to nine times. And once they've utilized their, their times, then it's eliminated and that's a freed space. Um, this is a security keypad. So when you do the five codes, it does only get programmed to one operator, but five users get to operate that operator with their own unique code. Really nice feature for commercial environments because if you've got employees, and let's say, or contract employees and you need to remove a code, you can remove a single code without um, impacting the rest of the users and they can all still get into the um, access point and now that person's access has been removed. So that's why it's called a security keypad. Both of them have this feature. Um, the other thing that we're getting is really good range. So I will point out something is the antenna is completely enclosed in here. Do not try to pull it through the weep holes on the bottom, all right? Um, it's, it was designed to be completely in, uh, internal. The range that has been tested would get about 500 feet gets that with the antenna completely internal. We don't want to pull that antenna out so that it can get damaged. So, but that's one of the things. I did notice it was very interesting when we were showing this keypad and letting people play with it, and you guys can come up and play with it later, um, that everybody tried to pull that antenna out. There are little hooks inside the internals of this uh, keypad that hold it in place. So, um, the other thing I want to talk is about on this one. So the 
CW5 is Security Plus 2.0 only. That means that it works with all of our newer technology operators. So our Logic 5 commercial door operators, which Frank will be talking about, and all of our Logic or our uh, Security Plus 2.0 gate operators that are in the market today. Now there are a lot of gate operators, and we have Logic 4 that is out there. And what do we do with those keypads? This one, the KPW250, can also be programmed to be a Security Plus keypad. So you can make it 315 or 390 to work with older technology operators. You can also program this to Lanier multi-code 300 megahertz. So if you've got a Lanier receiver on that gate operator or that commercial door operator, you can use this keypad with that as well. You just program it at setup. So it's very, very versatile, nice keypad to have, works with a bunch of different things, and it's very tough for outdoor environments. Okay. All right. Any questions on the keypads? Are you glad they're out? I know I am. OK. Um, the other thing I'm going to talk about, again, these are just some product updates. You may or may not be well aware of it. We've had a pro product in the market called the 375 LLM. It's our universal two-button remote control. And in January, it got a facelift. So this has been out since January. It replaces the 375 LLM. This is the 375 UT. UT means universal transmitter. You can remember that pretty easily. Um, just got a new look. All of the same functionality exists. So it still has the same compatibility with all of the technology out there. It programs the exact same way. It just got a facelift. Same price, everything. Isn't it pretty? Master Burgundy? Yeah. So that's the 375UT. And that came out in January 2015. So you won't see that 375LM gray one anymore. This is a its, it's, it's new brother. All right. All right. So another update. Um, if you have been to, or have heard any of my training sessions in the past, I always talk about when you program our MAX transmitters, which are our transmitter line that have some backwards compatibility to older technology. MAX is compatible back to our billion code, which goes back to 1993. Um, I always tell everybody to use the advanced programming instructions, which is, makes it really simple for an installer to quickly program that button to the technology that it needs to be, and then you program it to the operator. And I win, because they're changing the instructions so that everybody's going to program it that way. So all of the instructions are being updated for both the transmitters and the keypad to now program it in the advanced programming method. It's the most simple way to do it. It's easier. It's less confusing. You're not having to watch all the little buttons flashing or anything. And for commercial application, it really is the right way to do it because with a garage door opener, you get to look at two 100-watt light bulbs blinking or maybe one. But um, with a commercial logic board or a gate operator board, you're looking for a tiny little LED to flash. And when you're trying to watch the transmitter and look for that little LED, it can get a little difficult. So, do the, <laughs> exactly. so doing the advanced programming method is the best way to do it. All the instructions are being um, updated, so you'll start seeing that come through on all of these SKUs. So that's our 895 Max, our 890 Max, the Mini, the 893 Max, and the 877 uh, Max, the keypad. So they'll all get new updated instructions. And if anybody wants one of those little cheat sheet cards later, I've got some in my bag, so I can give some of those to you. So I told you I win. Eventually. Sometimes it takes a couple of years, but I'm patient. Um, okay, so the other product update is on the commercial side of the business, radios. It's our 811LM. This is our encrypted dip switch remote, primarily used with commercial door operators and or gate operators. It's, a, um, it's an older technology type remote. It has a dip switch uh, connector inside it, so that you, know, you change your little switches. So. The product bulletin that came out um, last year is on this remote. What happened is they changed the firmware of the remote control, because it does have firmware because it is encrypted, in November of 2013. So now the receiver actually sees it as a different remote. So dip switch technology is you just change the dip switches and you match everything. You only have to learn one in. If you match the dip switches, it, it just sees the same transmitter over and over again. With anything date programmed um, from our factory after November of 2013, 
the receiver sees it differently. Where this is gonna fall into play is if you installed one of our 850LM receivers on an operator prior to November 2013 and loaded some transmitters in, some 811 transmitters, and the homeowner or the, the property manager calls you and says, hey, you know, I need five more transmitters. If you match the dip switches, the receiver won't recognize it because it looks like a different transmitter. What you need to do, if you run into this, is program one from each day code in. So you'll take up two receiver, um, two slots on the receiver memory, use the same dip switch so you don't have to pay attention to it, but now it recognizes both code types. What it really did is the firmware calls this button one because it's a one button transmitter. And when they changed the firmware, they made a, a, a change on it that called it button two, so the receiver is looking for a different button. Uh, simple mistake, but this is the best way to accommodate it without having to get all the transmitters back. They all still perfectly work fine. We just want to make sure that you're aware of this issue. Um, it was actually discovered in Michigan, and um, we've run into it a couple of times. Not very often, but we've run into it a couple of times, so I just want to make everybody aware of it. Um, all right. Any questions on that? Did I make it more confusing? Hope not. All right, the other one is on the other dip switch remote. Actually happened at the same time, but we weren't aware of it. Um, so there is no service bulletin on it, but it is basically the same thing. The, when they did the firmware change, they also affected the firmware on this one. This is another encrypted dip transmitter. This is our open close stop transmitter, the 813LM. Primarily used in commercial door operators for open close stop functionality on the, on the uh, door. Um, same problem. Unfortunately, on this one, you can't change the dip switches and, and they both work because this is open, close, stop. What it did when they did the firmware change, it reversed the open and close. So what we do if you do run into this, again, we haven't had anybody run into this. We figured it out on our own. No customers have been impacted by this, but I just want you to be aware that if that happens and you do have older remotes prior to November of 2013, call me up, call up my tech support, um, let them know that you have that, that issue with the 813LM. We will actually swap out your, the original transmitters and get you all new ones from a later date code. So you can only have one date code in there to run the open close stop with that, with that logic four operator, or logic five operator. Now, why this has not been found anywhere is this product has been out since 2013, but logic five didn't come out until last year. So there really wasn't any Logic 5 operators out there to be impacted, but if you did put an 850LM receiver, external receiver, to do open close stop, you might run into it. So again, it hasn't shown up yet, but we did discover that it will do that, so I just wanna make everybody aware of it. So if you do run into it and it's not working right, that's your problem. Um, the other thing on this one, I talk about programming to multiple operators. Um, the original design of the actuator button, that's the actual things that you press, um, was such that if you pressed hard enough, you could actually activate the other button. Now, on open, close, stop, if you're using that functionality, it doesn't affect it because the open is the primary command, so it ignores the second command. If you've got this transmitter programmed to three operators, you could potentially, by pressing the middle button, open this one and then any pro operator program to the yellow button. It's and again, very rare. We ran into it at a fire department. I believe the main button was opening the main door and the ambulance door. Um, and it's just, if you press hard enough, you could activate it. So firemen, typically pretty strong guys, and typically there's an emergency, so they're pressing really hard. So <laughs> that's why we found it. So just, we've already corrected the plastics and you won't run into it after, I think this month, Frank, but I just wanted you to be aware, if you're using this to run multiple doors, you might run into that, let us know. We can swap out those remotes as well. Okay. One other quick remote, or quick uh, update on our passport receiver. Um, any sites using button filtering, uh, and that's if you're filtering out a single button to be only used for the gate so that a homeowner can use their, another button for their garage door. Um, you'll need to make sure that if you're using Passport Max transmitters that you've got an updated Passport receiver. It needs to be version 1.02. Nice thing about this receiver, as soon as you power it up, 
the first thing that shows up on the screen is its version. So it'll tell you what version it is, and you can actually find it in the menu as well. So just make sure you need to do that. If you do run into this, just let our tech support know that you are using button filtering and you need an updated receiver, and we'll take care of you. And the home link repeater program, I just want to give you a quick update on that one. So they changed the name of the repeater to the compatibility bridge. There are new part numbers for ordering it, the home link bridge and the home link bridge four pack. There is a new um, website for this, and there's a de and dealer extranet pages, so you can get more information on this. But the really cool thing that we've done is an app. So rather than trying to figure out if a car has the most updated home link in it to work with our operators, you can go on this, get this app on your phone, type in the uh, make and model and year of the car, and it'll tell you whether or not it, it's compatible and you're, if, if you'll need a bridge. So it's a quick, easy app to let you know if you're going to need one of those bridges when you go out to your site. That program is still in place with us so that if you give a free uh, compatibility bridge or repeater to your customer, you will get a free one back. We do, LiftMaster supports that with Gentex, and Gen Gentex actually pays for that program. So, but that's still available. I just wanted to give you an update on the part numbers and the new app. If you need the new app, go to bridge.liftmaster.com. It actually uh, comes up as a little, save it as a, an, an image on your phone and it works on iPhone. If you want to see it, I have it on my phone. I can show it to you later. Um, oh, that one got kind of messed up. So one of the things that I get quite often is what's the difference between Security Plus and Security Plus 2.0? So these are the main differences between them, but the one that I'm going to talk about, the one that confuses people the most, is the frequency. So because our new Security Plus 2.0 is on a tri-band, which is 310, 315, and 390, and our older technology, Security Plus, was on 315 and 390, People get confused to think that those are compatible to each other. They are not. Security Plus 2.0 is a unique code type. It's different than Security Plus. We just put it out on that same frequency band. All right? We just need, I just need to make sure that's clear. That gets a lot of confusion. The Security Plus 2.0 is, is unique in the fact that when we send our, our unique code, we are sending it on three frequencies simultaneously. That is to help us with interference with different electronics that are in the area at the time. So if something's going on on 315, the 310 or the 390 are most likely able to get through. It, you don't have to do anything. It's all doing it for you behind the scenes. I just want you, everybody to be aware of it. It is the most common question I get is, is on that because every, the frequencies are the same. Different codes. And... That's all I have. I did get a question from the group earlier, and it was on our Wi-Fi. So if you're actively using our MyQ technology, um, you might have seen some crazy notifications if you had notifications set up in your phone and you're using it. Um, that was a, when we did an update, we did a mass update uh, to our servers. There was an issue, and it created those fake notifications. Everybody that has a myliftmaster.com um, account and had notifications engaged got those same five texts. It was pretty funny in the office because we all got them at the same time, <laughs> like trying to figure out. I think it was something butterfly. I don't know. Remember? Um, and then we've been get doing um, some major overhauling on our servers to better support more customers. So we've had a couple of times where our site came down. But um, I think we're getting pretty stable. We've been basically everybody, all hands on board, working on getting that updated. So uh, please bear with us as we make it better for future going um, products. Yep. Yes, that is true. And I got permission to tell you guys, even though it's not out yet. Um, so we have a new product coming out in August. It's going to be on our 8550, which is our battery backup unit, belt drive. And it's going to be a new um, board where the, uh, uh, there's a Wi-Fi chip actually built into the board. So you won't need a gateway anymore. And in fact, it can be your gateway for other devices. So if you've got a, two garage door openers and a gate operator and you're all doing MyQ and you, you swap out one of those operators um, with the new 8550W for Wi-Fi, 
you don't need your gateway plugged into your router anymore. It now talks to your router via Wi-Fi and becomes your gateway for your other garage door opener and your gate operator. So that's coming out in August. It'll be the 8550W. It will replace the 8550. And the other ones are going to follow behind it through the next, I think, three to six months. Um, so all of those um, MyQ operators will switch to be Wi-Fi. I believe the Elite Series is the first to go. So you'll start seeing some communications on that. That's new. It hasn't really been launched yet, so Service Spring gets a little... Way to go, Paul. <laughs> um, so that's coming out in August. It's the 8550W. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Yes, it does. Okay, the question was, will the board be different um, uh, from the 8550 to the 8550W? And yes, it will. I also got a question that, can you swap it? I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have to get an answer for that. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. I'll be sitting over there later if you want, if something comes up. All right, thank you very much, Sherry. Um, let's move along to the next one. Uh, a great presentation, and our next presenter that we have up is Frank Qualtier. He's also been here before, and so we're bringing him back for another great presentation. But um, Frank began his career with LiftMaster in 2008 as an inside sales coordinator. Since then, Frank has been um, with LiftMaster uh, and he's been promoted to outside uh, sales manager for Indiana and Kentucky. And most recently, national account manager working closely with LiftMaster OEMs. Frank is now the channel manager for commercial door operators where he will continue to focus on marketing and sales growth for, Lyft, for the LiftMaster Lyft uh, commercial uh, product line. Frank is going to share with us today some exciting new commercial product information, so please give a hand to Frank Qualtier. Thank you very much, Matt, and thank you to Service Spring for being great partners, having us in here today. Um, we did this last year, and I think we've been doing it for a few years now, and it's a it's very successful, great way to get the, uh, the name out of new products, information out to all of our dealers. So once again, thank you to Service Spring for having us in and, and being able to talk about some of our new products here. So just to start off, and it looks like we've got some funky slides coming over, but don't mind that. I'll, I'll cover all the information. Um, we're starting off with just doing a recap on Logic 5. Uh, Logic 5's been out since October of 2014. Um, been a very successful product for us. Um, it's worked really well in all the environments. Uh, we've seen some great success with MyQ, with the Security Plus 2.0, with the dual voltage. So we're gonna do a quick recap on those features and those products. So this outlines the, the three main features on the Logic 5 operators. Prior to Logic 5, our Logic 4 was a great reliable machine. What we wanted to do was add some nice features that would help the dealer, that would help LiftMaster, and that would also help the end user. So we implemented something called Security Plus 2.0. I'm not gonna get too far into that because Sherry just went over in it in great detail, but basically allowing you to use three frequencies from your transmitter simultaneously rather than one gives us much better range, and we've seen that in action um, with the Logic 5 operators. I'm not seeing very many dealers at all run external antennas anymore. If you are, start rethinking that because you may not need to. There are very, very rare environments where you need to run an external antenna because the radio receiver and the remotes are very, very strong and are able to get through a lot of that interference. So that's been a great thing for our dealers, a great thing for our end users, because when you press that remote, you want it to work every time. The next thing we added was the MyQ. Um, the MyQ, as you all know, has been a part of our residential line for quite some time. We added it to the commercial environment, and just the same, we've seen some pretty great results from it. Um, on the MyQ, uh, on the commercial side, it's very much the same as it is on the residential side. We have some updates that we want to add over the years to make it more commercial focused, but right now we're seeing some great applications, um, such as Jiffy Lubes, um, different small businesses, warehouses, 
the ability to monitor, control, and get alerts for any of your doors at your business is very, very vital, same as it is on your residence. Um, so I've seen many different, uh, I actually have seen one Jiffy Low Lube uh, manager that uh, runs four stores, use this on each of his locations. It's a great way for him to know before he goes to bed at night, hey, all my doors are closed, my shop's all locked up. Um, and then if for any reason someone was to open the doors, he gets an immediate alert to them. So that's just one of the many examples of commercial MyQ environments, and a lot of our, our dealers and end users have been really excited about it. Once again, to add MyQ to a facility, all you have to do is have a Logic 5 operator and add an internet gateway. Um, the internet gateway is still needed on the commercial operators. We're not adding Wi-Fi to it anytime soon. So you'll continue to use the internet gateway. But once you have the internet gateway in place, that'll connect to up to 16 devices. So once you have one internet gateway, you can control 16 doors or multi um, doors and lights in your facility. The last feature that we uh, in, uh, included in this operator was dual voltage. And this has been great for our partners such as Service Spring and our dealers for stocking products. Um, what we were able to do is create a single phase machine and a three phase machine. And rather than having to select the voltage when you order the product, you now are able to just select the voltage at the time of the installation. Um, so as you can see on the screen there, you've got a, um, a, a wiring harness that will come loose every time you order a single phase or a three phase operator. And then you are going to take that machine out to the job site, verify the power you have coming in, and plug that Molex connector into the right plug, either 115 or 230, and that's clearly marked on the board. We've had great success with that. Like I said, companies such as Service Spring, they're able to um, take care of all of their customers' needs without stocking a multitude of different voltage products. So it's been ex exciting for us, it's been exciting for our dealers. It's easier to stock the product than it was before. Um, I know many of us have probably been out there doing um, wiring changes to change it from 230 to 115 or vice versa. No more of that, it just makes life a lot easier. Other than Logic 5, we're pretty status quo on our commercial operators right now. We don't have anything that new on the horizon, but what we do have is a lot of safety products. Um, Sherry will be talking a little bit more today about our Don't Chance It, Check It program. And commercially, we are very much invested and involved in safety. Um, as we all know, commercial doors, rolling steel and sectional are big. They can be dangerous. People can get hurt on them. They're probably more dangerous than a residential door. So, um, so it's very important to us to continue to invest in safety, to continue to get the word out. Um, in 2010, we had a UL325 change that I think was very much needed where we added the ability to have monitored photo eyes to a commercial operator. And without those monitored photo eyes, you have to use constant pressure to close. Um, you could also use a four wire electric edge or another edge product. Um, but we are continuing to invest in other safety devices to make environments even safer. safer. One of them is our new light curtain product. Um, this is a really exciting product. I've got one on demo here and we can pass it around and open this bad boy up later. But what the light curtain does, and you've got a nice visual representation there, is instead of having a photo eye where you simply have an eye on one side and an eye on the other side and they're sending one beam, is you actually have three feet high curtains that are covering the entire area. So you've got 36 inches of coverage. Um, obviously this protects more ground. So this is actually an ancillary product. Um, it's secondary safety. So that means it cannot be used as your primary monitored entrapment protection. If you hook this up only, you'll still be uh, um, under constant pressure to close. But if you hook this up in tandem with a photo eye or with an electric edge or our OES edge, you can actually um, use this as a secondary safety feature. And this is really for protecting trucks, um, different types of equipment. Our photo eyes are meant to be at 12 inches from the ground to protect people. We're coming out with other products to help protect some of the other things that we have in our environments. Um, obviously people as well, this is gonna help protect people even better, but some of those trucks, um, a lot of our commercial environments we have, uh, fire, fire trucks have overhangs, so it's very, very good to, it's a 36 inch light curtain Sorry, six inches, and then, you need to be, and then you need to be six inches above those for the curtain. Thank you, Sherry and Denny. This is what your actual light curtains look like. Um, another nice thing about these is they are NEMA 4 rated, so car washes, any type of environment, they're gonna work very well. 
Um, once again, just providing our dealers more opportunities to sell safety in these environments. Um, if, if we've gone out to many, many auto dealerships, auto dealerships have not played by the UL325 rules historically, and our dealers have probably been a part of that to some degree. We're trying to help um, with, with making the safety and following those regulations easier. So instead of going out to a car or auto service station and putting a photo eye in one corner and another photo eye in the top corner across, which I know none of us here do, um, you don't have to do that anymore. You can put your standard photo eyes at six inches to, to protect people, and now you can add a light curtain to protect anything else in that environment. You can also use multiple light curtains in one environment. So like I said, these are three feet. You can use two sets if you want. You can put them right next to each other or you can spread them out. So if you've got a big tall door and you want to protect multiple different areas in that door space, you can do so. So very excited about this product. There's not too many light curtains out there in our industry. And um, so far we've had great success with any of the dealers that have tried them. Optical edge system. So this has been out a little bit longer, but it's still a relatively new safety product. Um, what this is, is it's actually a LiftMaster designed um, edge. And it works very much like an electric edge, um, except it uses a slightly different technology in which you actually plug photo eyes into each side of the edge. So it actually is using photo eye technology within that edge, and it's really kind of neat. A um, Couple of the key advantages to this is you cut it to size and length right at the time of the install. So it's, uh, there's no special ordering, there's no making sure you have exactly the right size. You can either order it by kit, so you can order it by 16 foot rolling or sectional kit. We have a 24 foot sectional kit or we just sell it by the roll. We sell 50 foot rolls. Once you have the 50 foot rolls, we highly suggest putting these on your service trucks because how often in the past could you go out to a job site, see that an edge was bad in the field, and actually replace it right off your truck right then and there. That really hasn't been a possibility with a lot of the products that have been out there in the past, but now we have the ability to service any edge and replace it immediately by the ability to cut that right down to size, plug your photo eyes in, and attach it to the door and you're good to go. So this actually, the sectional um, product works very, very well on most standard doors. And then we do sell channel if you've got any type of you know, um, non-standard sectional bottom door or non-standard sectional uh, rolling steel door. This is what it looks like when it's actually working. So as you can see, um, there is a photo eye on each side of the edge, and that edge is acting like a, it's basically just a rubber ashicle with that photo eye running through it. So as you can see, if there's any obstruction, it's gonna cut off that photo eye beam, and it's gonna reverse the edge. Once again, uh, much, very easy pro, uh, product to install. Um, great for service trucks and new installations. Uh, very, very cost effective for an edge installation. And the other thing that's great about it is it's NEMA 6 rated, which means it can sit in standing water. So anytime we have flooding um, in any areas where electric edges may go bad, uh, this will not go bad. This can sit in standing water and it will continue to work. The only thing that you have to watch out for here is if, if it's sitting in standing water and that water freezes up, obviously, until, it does, until it's unfrozen. If the photo eye can't see, you're not going to be able to get through. But great product. It's worked really well. The other nice thing is if you get scratches, nicks, bumps in that edge where it might have been replaced in the past, as long as that photo eye can continue to see through, it's going to work fine. So we've seen great success out of this product as well, and we're really excited about it. This can also be your primary entrapment protection. So if you have a situation where you do not want to use photo eyes, LiftMaster allows you to use this as your primary entrapment protection, and this will be your monitored edge. This is just a quick look at the rest of our safety sensor portfolio. Um, like I said, we are trying to invest in more options for our customers. Everybody likes a little bit something different, um, so we have come out with some different photo eyes. Uh, our CPSUs are standard uh, eyes that come in the box and they work great, but in certain environments you might want to move up to the CPSU N4, which is a little bit stronger and NEMA 4 rated, so it's waterproof. Um, we also have our CPS RP N4, which is a great product. Um, a lot of people when UL325 came into action um, for tw in 2010 for commercial door operators were a little bit nervous about um, the added time and cost it takes to hook up and wire photo eyes. Well, we came out with a monitored reflective photo eye and a lot of people have latched onto this right away because you only have to wire to one side. 
Um, product works great. I believe it has a 40 foot um, maximum width. So um, we've got a lot there out there in the field. A couple of customers had issues with them early on and we made a slight change that's pretty much taken all those issues away. In the past, and you can even see it in this picture, it's an old photograph, the reflector is a dual pane reflector. We've actually switched that out to a single pane reflector and now the product is working flawlessly in the field. We'll be running a promotion in August, September to actually um, add the CPS RPN 4s in the box at no charge upgrade. So if, you're, if it's something you're interested in, try them on the August, September promo, you'll be able to upgrade them for free and then uh, see if you like them and then that might become a regular part of your installations. We also have the CPS OPN 4s. These are rubber photo eyes and a rubber housing. And the reason these are great is because they flex back into place. So environments where there's a lot of, um, of equipment, a lot of people moving around, those photo eyes are gonna get knocked around and you're getting nuisance, photo, uh, nu nuisance calls to go back out just to realign those photo eyes. The open fours are fantastic because they'll flex right back into place when they're knocked out of place. And once again, it goes back to safety and then selling the entire job. So um, LiftMaster, commercially, we're, we're continuously preaching, you know, hey, we're not just door and operator guys. We want to sell a solution to all of our customers. And our customers have different needs out there. So um, looking at the options of adding different sets of photo eyes, looking at the options of adding a light curtain, being more of a consultant to your end user and understanding would the MyQ capabilities be something that they're interested in. Um, you know, it's a great value add for a pretty low cost. Um, so we're really trying to help our dealers get into that mode of selling an entire solution. We've got some brochures. If any of you haven't seen them, I highly suggest um, reach out to me or your LiftMaster rep or even Service Spring can take care of you for some literature. Um, we have purpose configured brochures and they are actually speaking directly to the end users. In the past, all of our literature spoke to you, the dealer, but if you tried to hand that over to a car or automotive station center, they would say this is Chinese to me. So now we are making literature that actually speaks directly to them and says, hey, at auto service stations, we highly recommend not just one set of photo eyes, but two, or a set of photo eyes and a light curtain. We also recommend for fire stations, a red green light to help you not hit your sectional doors on your way out of the, uh, of the fire station. So all this literature is all an effort to help you guys sell the solutions, sell around the door and not just the door and operator. And then by the way, also making some extra margins in the meantime at those job sites. That's all I've got today. Any questions? Yeah. Today, our 3900 only accepts the standard photo eye. So um, that is a question that has come up before. Um, I am, our team is actually looking into options for the future. That product um, is the exact same as the LiftMaster 8500 with some minor changes to what comes in the box and what works with it. As we look to further enhance that product on the residential and commercial side, I foresee some of those options becoming available, but no, not today. You could put it outside, but you, you, you will have issues with it outside more than not because of um, different things in the environment, dust, air, um, light, sunlight can cause some, some distraction there. So um, it's really meant for commercial doors. I would not try and use this on gate operators because you could have some nuisance openings. But it is NEMA 4, so it's not going to get damaged because of the water or anything like that. It's just I don't want to promote to use it completely in outdoor environments, especially for very wide doors. Uh, I don't want to see you guys having nuisance reversals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, we sell the single pane reflectors. I'm sorry, I'm gonna repeat the question for everybody so that you can hear it. Um, the question was is if you've got reflectors in the field that have either broken 
or you've modified to make them work better, uh, LiftMaster does sell our single pane reflector and we will offer it to anybody that calls. So if you want to just order the reflector for any job sites you have, especially if you have the old double pane reflector, we'll actually replace it at no charge. So any, op, um, any sites that you have like that with the dual pane reflectors that are either aren't working well or you've had to modify like you had to do, go ahead and just give us a call and we'll replace that. Steve? Um, well, it's, it's as we know, uh, I'm sorry, Steve, we'll, we'll repeat your question really quick. The question was with DC operators on the commercial line, you'd strictly be talking about the 3900, 3950, um, much more so on the, the residential line, you'll see it in the 8500. Um, if you are using a DC motor, uh, the force can be an issue sometimes if you've got unbalanced doors. Um, it's typically happening with very, very heavy doors or doors that are out of balance. Um, and basically when, when the door is coming down, you can see nuisance reversals. Um, typically when talking to our tech support, we can help work with you to try and do a couple of different things. But the most important thing is that door be as balanced as possible. If it's as balanced as possible and um, there are a couple other things like pusher springs that we'll recommend, um, pitching your track to make sure that that door rolls down smoothly. I would say any type of application that you come across where you're having trouble with a 3900 or an 8500, just reach out to LiftMaster Tech Support and we'll have some really good ways to try and get around that situation. But it's also not for every door. Just like each operator is made individually, not every operator is for every application, so make sure that you're using the right operator for the right application as well. Sure. I'm going to defer that one to Sherry, I think. Um, I think that's a battery issue uh, when, when cold weather is affecting your remotes, but I'm going to defer that one to Sherry. Um. Typically when you see a remote control having an issue um, with really cold weather or a keypad having an issue with a really cold weather, it's the battery. The battery specs are only so far for cold temperatures. Um, we've been in Chicago. Uh, we've had a lot of problems in the last two winters during those really, really cold snaps um, with keypads, external keypads the, for the residential garage openers. And that's purely because it literally got colder than the battery could work. So it's, once you warm them up, it works again, but it's, uh, it's uh, part of the battery. What I do recommend if you're running into that, use a lithium battery. So if, you're, if that remote control or that um, keypad doesn't have a lithium battery in it, swap it out. They've got better performance in uh, colder environments. Thank you, Sherry. Bring up the radio control expert for that one. Paul? Oh, okay, good, good. So the question was, uh, Logic 5 three-phase, do I have any update? Yes, I do have an update for you all. Um, thank you, everyone in the industry and all of our good customers for your patience with this. Um, in February, we realized that we had an issue with our three-phase machines. Um, it took us a little bit of time to understand what that issue actually was, uh, but we have figured it out and we're in the midst of redesigning our product on the three-phase side. So what happens is that three-phase power board actually has um, a flaw where the relays can stick. And when the relays stick, you can have problems with the motor and you're going to have more motor failures than normal in the field. So what we decided to do, we're very, very proud to be a quality co company. We want to put quality products out into the field. What we decided to do as soon as we found that out was to put the product line on hold. So all of Logic 5 three-phase operators have been on hold for some time. We have been offering Logic 4 three-phase in their place. We've completely opened up the line again on Logic 4 three-phase. We're manufacturing every single type of operator that, we ha uh, that we've made previously historically to service all of your needs in the field. Um, we have redesigned our Logic 5 three-phase board, uh, three board. I actually was down at the plant a couple weeks ago, saw the redesign. It looks really, really great, and all the testing is going great. 
Unfortunately, it's gonna take some time before we're able to relaunch it. And that's because of the rigorous testing that LiftMaster does. On this one, we're gonna go over and above because this one already did slip through the, tr the cracks in testing and made it out to the field. We're gonna be very, very, um, we're gonna work really, really hard to make sure that we have a great product to relaunch to you all in the field but we're gonna do it after we've made very, very sure that it's working perfectly and that we aren't gonna have those types of issues moving forward. Does that give you guys the answer that you were looking for? So we're probably looking at, um, based on the timelines that I've seen, and this is always subject to change because if something doesn't go right in that testing, we might have to try some different things. But um, right now we're looking at having that product wrapped up to be reintroduced either late this year or early next year. Until then, as I said, Logic 4 three-phase will be full production so that any jobs out there that have the three-phase need, we're able to still put, supply a very, very quality, reliable operator in those places. And then we're very excited to reintroduce Logic 5 three-phase and have that be the workhorse out there for you guys that it's supposed to be. Any other questions? Thank you guys again for having me today. I'll be over here. So if you have any questions for me later, feel free to grab me. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, uh, it's good to see the new interesting products that are coming out, and um, we're excited to see those out uh, on the field here soon. So with that being said, we, ha we will be welcoming uh, Sherry back on the stage again to give us another presentation about uh, LiftMaster's safety. So uh, give a hand for Sherry. All right, on presentation. Um, basically, we have a group of team, uh, our team called the Safety Ambassadors, and the Safety Ambassador for this area is, her name is Shelly Perry, and unfortunately, she's doing double time right now with the gate safety as well, which I'm gonna kind of go over today. Uh, so she was, she's in, different, she's in a different state, so <laughs> she can't be in two places at once, so I'm helping her out and covering her presentation for you. So. Um, our big safety program kicked off about a year and a half ago with our, our residential garage or opener uh, product line, and it's our don't chance to check it. So, oh, that's right. I'm in control again. All right, so the don't check, chance it check it program is all about making sure that all of our customers are safe. So we did a bunch of research and we discovered that one in 15 garages out there don't have the required safety devices or they might have some wear and tear that means that they're not operating at their best. Um, the other thing is, is that most of our customers, 70%, are actually using that door as their main door to get into their home. So we wanna make sure that it is as safe as possible. So we started this program to help bring awareness to the consumers that they really need to pay attention to this very large door that they're going in and out of every day. And we want to bring that business to you to make sure that you're helping them have the safest products that are out there. Um, so one of the things that we created, oh, and I didn't bring it. Frank, can you grab those two on the corner there? I'm sorry, I was not prepared. All right, so one of the things that we created for you was these checklists. And these checklists are really nice. Um, this one is the garage door and opener safety checklist. And if you look at it, you can see that there's a bunch of different things that it's going to ask you to look for to make sure that you have the best installation and the safest installation for your consumer. And it'll, they're green, yellow, and red. And green means good to go. It's been installed properly, it's working properly, you're good on that point. Yellow means, you know what, you might have to, it works right now, but that's not something that you're probably gonna have to replace soon um, or is a little on the iffy side. And red means fail, it needs to be fixed immediately. And by going through this checklist, you can actually work with your homeowners and to explain to them why they need to either fix something or to buy something new, all right? So this is kind of helping you walk through that to make sure that they understand all the different pieces of that garage door and its operator to make sure that they have the safest product out there. So these are really nice, and you guys can get these. These are our checklists that are in a binder. They have copies. You leave a copy with your homeowner. You keep a copy for yourself. So you can show, especially if you're 
uh, you find a, an opener out there or a door, whole system that is totally unsafe, fill that out, hand that to them, keep a copy in your file that if something ever happens, that you've got that record that you've told that homeowner that they've got an unsafe operator, kind of helps you out as well. Um, so that's one of the nice things. And you can get these from us. We've created this as a tool for you to have. Uh, so the three-step uh, safety check is uh, that you want to always ensure that the photo eyes are installed properly. So photo eyes, because photo eyes are to save people, not things, need to be installed at six inches above the ground, no higher. So you don't, if you see something where they're installed higher, you need to flag that. That is wrong. That should be fixed. Um, the other one you want to check is that um, you take something that's a six inches high and you block that photo eye and you want to make sure that when you press the a remote control or the control panel that that door re reverses immediately and doesn't close. Uh, and then the third one is you want to lay a something like the hard like a block of wood that's uh, one and a half inches or taller on the ground and you want to close that door. It should reverse on that one and a half inches. If it doesn't, that operator is unsafe and needs to be adjusted and or replaced. All right, so those are the three major things that you're going to be looking at. That checklist goes through a bunch of other um, uh, items with regards to the whole entire system, the door, the track, everything. So you want to use that to make sure that you are always doing a safe installation and that the installation that you're working on is always safe. Um, and like I said, we do have the free tools. So We've got these booklets. You can order these uh, from us as well. Um, we've got safety pins. There's a sticker for the garage walls. Not, not, a lot of people don't like those, but it's there. Door hangers to remind them that they need to be safe. Um, we even have coloring books for the kids. So if you want to get the kids' awareness up there and hey, give them the coloring book because they're going to want to talk to Safety Cat and talk their parents into getting a new opener because they're going to be unsafe. So you can get the kids involved in helping you sell. It works, by the way. My niece loves the coloring book. Um, like I said, we do have safety ambassadors. So they're located strategically throughout the country. Um, their primary goal is to um, promote the Don't Chance a Check It program and to make sure consumers are aware. So they are at your disposal for doing home shows, helping to do safety training, whatever you need. They can provide you information. They can provide you all these safety tools. They can explain how they work. Your safety ambassador, as I mentioned, is Shelly Perry. She's out, out of the Chicago area, so she is available. Um, just work with Dennis um, and Service Spring, and if you need some assistance from a safety ambassador at your location for something, um, we're happy to help. Um, and that's her phone number and email. It's Shelly, with no E, um, Perry at liftmaster.com. Um, the other thing is, is that it's for, on the residential garage or opener side, it's very easy to get safety certified. And you can visit training at don't check it, uh, don't chance to check it .com. It's a, I believe it's a 10 question um, thing to see what, you know, what your knowledge is about doing safe installations. And once you're registered, you're eligible to get this don't chance it check it by your dealer locator uh, listing at our website. So, and we're promoting this with consumers, so that's going to mean something to them. They're going to know that you're going to do something that's a safe installation in their home. So, also once you do that, oh, let me go back. Um, once you do that, it's going to give you the information on how to order all of these special tools um, to help you promote. So that, that's once you do this registration, you'll get the information on how to, you know, order more of these. Um, uh, booklets, the, the, the coloring books are really nice to hand out to the kids at a home show, all that kind of stuff. You can order it directly from our, our safety site. So any questions on the residential garage door safety? Sure. as long as you don't fix it? Oh, the question is, what is the liability if you do the checklist and the homeowner doesn't want to do anything? My recommendation is you don't touch that door opener. You don't touch that system whatsoever, because the last person that touched it and did any kind of repair to it is responsible and liable. So if you do that, 
you walk away. If they don't want to fix it, you walk away. I know it's kind of hard to walk away from business, but you're protecting your business and your reputation, and I would recommend not doing that. All right? OK, so the next one we're going to talk about is some new stuff that's coming out. So as Frank mentioned earlier, in 2010, our commercial door operator um, line was updated by UL325 so that we had to do a monitored uh, safety device. Um, the gate operator industry is going to the same route. So UL325 and the ASTM F2200, I believe, is a standard. It's somewhere later in the presentation. Um, is also being updated for gate standards. So existing UL325 for gates is there are four vehicular classes, residential, commercial, industrial, and restricted access. Restricted access is like a high security, military, or a maximum security prison type thing. Um, and they used to have different acceptable entrapment zones, depending on what the classification of the site was. So um, they've always required two independent entrapment zones per every um, entrapment zone area. You always had to have two things covering it. They just didn't have to be monitored. So the other one that we talk about is entrapment devices, um, which are type C. That's inherent force limiting, um, the adjustable clutch, and inherent pressure relief device. The one thing I want to bring up here is that the clutches on LiftMaster operators are not, um, they are not approved as entrapment devices, so you can't use our clutches. So that's something that I just want to make for LiftMaster that's being done, so that's not a valid one. What will change in 2016 on that UL325 is that the B1 and, and B2 uh, uh, devices, which are your, um, your photo eye sensors and your edges, now must be monitored on gates. So every entrapment zone must have a monitored uh, device on it. So you can't just add a device that's not monitored anymore, it has to have a monitor. That is a, a total UL325 change. Um, and then the type E devices were, which I, I think they were an audible alarm, are no longer valid. The other big thing is, it's in the next one. Oh, um, acceptable entrapment protection by the different class. So you used to have that residential, commercial, industrial, and security. Now all of them require it. So what that means, and it doesn't matter what vehicular class you have anymore, you have to abide by having a monitored device. The inherent sensing, which is like when it touches, that one's one. You now your second one has to be either a photo eye or uh, an edge or something that, that is monitored in order to make that a safe uh, system. So the other change is they changed some of the dimensions. You're going to have to be really careful about a lot of these. I'm just showing you the, the, the photo eye ones here. So the sensors for a gate cannot be any higher than 27 inches, and they can't be any further than 5 inches from the plane of the gate. All right? So that's one um, uh, thing that you're going to have to change. It used to be a different dimension. There are also a lot of dimension changes, and I don't list them here, on the, um, the actual physical gate itself. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If you have a moving gate and there's um, barbed wire on top, that barbed wire can has to start six feet or higher. Can't be any lower than six feet. If you've got tape, the barbed tape, uh, razor wire on top, it has to be, it can be no lower than eight feet on that moving gate. Um, pickets at the bottom of an edge have to be flush. You can't have anything, you're gonna have to put another a uh, piece of metal or something across that so that something can't get stuck. That's a new, that's a new rule. Any diff, um, in a moving gate, anything that's t uh, more than two and a half inches so I can stick my hand in it two and a half inches needs to be meshed. So if you've got a beautiful ornamental gate with pickets that are four inches apart, that you're going to have to put mesh in there, that it has to be meshed. Now that is a new rule. So those are some of the things that you need to kind of pay attention. We are doing gate safety training throughout the country. I believe they just had one in Detroit. Um, and the next one in this area is July 8th in Columbus. And I believe there's one in Chicago on the 16th. But if you are interested in doing a gate safety training uh, with LiftMaster, we're providing this uh, for everybody, for all of our customers. 
That's the 8th. July 8th is Columbus. I think it's the 16th, July 16th. But if you're interested in going or if you're on, on the webinar and you're from a different area and want to know what's in your area, um, please give LiftMaster a call. You can call me directly um, or call Service Spring and they can get a hold of me and we can get you a schedule of where the gate safety training in your area is. But we're going to be doing them throughout the country, making sure all of our customers are aware of these major changes that are going on for gates. Um, uh, okay, so one of the things, so I did, the, I had to do this gate safety training. I did it uh, last month. And one of the things that was very interesting to me was that UL325 and it's ASTM F2200, it's code. It was adopted by the International Building Code in 2009, the Fire Code in 2009, and the Inter in, um, International Residential Code in 2012. That means that if you're doing installations that aren't doing at least the two entrap or the two devices per entrapment zone, monitored or otherwise, you're not meeting code. Now, whether or not the area is monitoring that and making sure that people are meeting code is one thing. But if you're doing this, you're not meeting these codes if you're, if you're not following all your different entrapment zones and making sure that they're all safe. So I kind of, was, I was surprised by that. I'm like, okay, well, just because UL325 didn't make it mandatory, do these codes exist? So if the question that I was getting um, and that the, the uh, teacher was getting in the, uh, in the safety training was, well, what if the guy down the street quotes a cheaper because he's not quoting all of this stuff? Report him. If you report it to the building codes and you report it to them, they have to look into it. So you're, if you're doing the right thing by making it safe, that's the right thing. If, if there's a, uh, somebody down the road that's not doing a safe installation, report them. They won't get the job. You will. So it's kind of rude, but everybody should be doing safe installations. My opinion. Um, oh, another goofy thing. So we're here to help on the gate safety training as well. So remember that nice booklet I showed you with the safety checklist? We've got one for gates as well. So there's a gate checklist here. The nice thing about this one is on the back side, they did some really nice illustrations on what to look for to make sure that you're protecting all of the entrapment zones in a gate installation, a, a typical gate installation. So it's pretty nice um, if you want to come and look at this. But again, you can um, use one of these, check it. You can actually go up to an existing site and let the, the, the property manager know hey, your gate installation isn't safe, and here's why. And you can go through this with them. We've got a guy that I was talking to that's already doing it, and he didn't have this checklist. So he figured out what the new rules were, and he's been going around his whole area and just letting the property managers know that their, their installation isn't safe and what it'll take to get it up to, to be safe. So. so we do have all of the kinds of stuff that you can get from us as well. And again, work with Service Spring and Dennis and we can get you these materials for the gate safety as well. There's our checklist. Works pretty much the same way. Has the red means good, yellow means probably gonna need to be fixed soon, and and the red or the yellow and the red means fail. So works exact same way. Um, which brings to your question earlier. Um, as an installer or technician, is your company liable? If you serviced it last, you will be included in the lawsuit. It does not matter if you did the initial installation. If you serviced it or touched it, you will be included. Just going to throw that out there so you are aware it pays to be safe. All right? Any questions? Now, this was just a really quick, short version of our gate safety training. The program itself is pretty in-depth, and you will get quizzed, and you will get certified if you take the, the gate safety training. So I, if you're in this business, I highly recommend you at least attend one of our gate safety trainings. All right, thank you. All right. 
Thank you, Sherry, and thank you to all of our presenters uh, here today. We appreciate everyone taking time out of your busy schedules to come uh, pay us a visit, and uh, we hope that you learned a lot of valuable information today about all of the new and interesting LiftMaster products. So in addition to LiftMaster, don't forget about um, Service Spring and some of the things that we're doing with Solutions Education. Uh, we have just released our newest course bundled for residential garage doors. You can purchase nine courses for just 150 per user. That's a savings of $20 per purchase. Plus watch um, your email after the webinar for a special 10% discount. And as a special sneak peek to our web of, uh, webinar viewers, we are actually going to be rolling out a new, um, as my dad mentioned, I work on the IT side of things, which is exciting. Um, but um, you guys are aware of Solutions Education. We're going to be rebranding that as Solutions Connect. And we're going to add some other features. And we're going to have a five-phase rollout um, with this new application. And so it's going to be some really exciting changes happening to it within the next coming weeks. So we just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that. And and um, it's still going to have uh, Solutions Engineering, which is the current app um, that's used, uh, like my dad said, by over 5,000 different customers right now. So it'll still have those features. We're just going to be building in more, um, more things that we've heard from the industry that people want to see, and then uh, some other uh, apps in the future that uh, should help make your guys' uh, job a little bit easier. So that's really cool. It's exciting. And... Um, a couple more things uh, before we close out here is don't forget about our July and August outlook. Um, we, we have additional shaving, uh, savings on our one inch tube shaft and cable drums. Um, at the conclusion of the presentation, you will receive an email with a brief survey regarding the seminar and what you would like to see from us in the future. This really helps us just kind of gauge what you guys liked, um, some of the presenters, uh, and, and what you guys would like to see in the future, because this is really for you guys, and we want to make sure that we tailor everything that we do to um, really suit those needs. So if you guys could uh, take a second when you get the email, um, that will help us out tr uh, tremendously. Also, the winner um, of the Bluetooth speaker will be announced in that email and on our social media pages. Um, and so from all of us here at Service Spring, we'd like to thank everyone for attending, and we hope to see you next year. Thank you.